Hello and welcome to the Cracking the Physician Code course. The goal of this course is simple. It's to help you accelerate your practice growth by acquiring more physician clients. I'm Dr. Vicki Rackner, your host. I leverage my experience as a practicing physician and a clinical faculty at the University of Washington School of Medicine and entrepreneur to help you take the fastest, easiest, most direct path to physician client acquisition. Hank Greenberg says so famously, all I want in life is an unfair advantage. The eight modules in this course will give you the competitive edge in the medical market. Today, we're going to talk about the 10 laws of physician engagement. They're like the laws of gravity. They're neither good nor bad. This is just the way things are. When you align your actions with these 10 laws, you'll join the high performers in the medical market. Generally, when my clients are struggling, we can identify which law is being violated. When they align themselves with the laws, they get much better results. Before we go there though, let's talk about three questions. First, why work with physicians? Second, what's a surgeon doing helping business-minded people acquire physician clients? And third, do you really need to be here? Why don't you pause the video and make sure that you have something to capture your notes? Many people say that taking this course is like drinking out of a fire hose. Let's begin with the top three reasons that you've made such a good choice in targeting physicians. Reason number one is Sutton's Law. When Willie Sutton was asked why he robbed banks, he said it's simple, that's where the money is. According to the U.S. Department of Labor Statistics, nine out of the top ten paid professionals in the U.S. are doctors. Second, physicians are loyal clients. Once you acquire a physician client, you can expect to have them for life. And third, the potential to build a referral-based business is very big. This is Dr. John Ryan, the Chief of Surgery, when I did my surgical residency. When Dr. Ryan said jump, people asked how high. Once you build a relationship with people in this group, particularly the key physician opinion leaders, word about your services will spread. Physicians also have a need. According to this AMA insurance study, almost half of physicians are behind where they'd like to be in retirement planning. I contacted the study author to discover that only about half of U.S. physicians are currently working with a financial advisor. Yet, 100% of physicians are dealing with the pain of the Affordable Care Act. From the perspective of a physician, this is a solvency problem. You have financial solutions. Physicians' financial pain is your business opportunity, and this is why I say that this is the right time and the right place for the right advisors to mine the treasures in the medical market. You might think that it's easy to engage physicians, yet every day I speak with advisors who say things like, I can't get past the gatekeeper, or doctors are just too busy or too distracted, or they'll never leave their brother-in-law. And when I hear them talk like this, I'm reminded of a scene from my son's toddler years. He had a love affair with trucks. One time we came by a huge construction site and he pointed his chubby little toddler finger in the direction of the dirt pile and said, touch trucks. I said, sweetie, that would be great, but look, there's a fence all around the construction site and do you see the sign on that locked gate? It says, do not enter. He thought for a moment and suggested, take down sign. I'm here to help you take down the do not enter sign so you can actively engage physician prospects and clients. I also have to say though, that from my own personal experience, I understand the frustration of trying to reach something that you can see and having challenges. I'd like to tell you a little bit about my story. If my life had a bumper sticker, it would be heal thyself. I describe myself as an accidental surgeon. When I was in graduate school, I fainted on my way to the bathroom. I was emergently taken to the operating room where I was found to have a bleeding ovarian cyst. About half of my blood volume was in my pelvis. Here's my operative note. I woke up in the recovery room just knowing that I would be a doctor and save other people's lives like my own had been saved. Not surprisingly, I became a surgeon and set a private practice here in Seattle. Once I was settled, it was time to turn to my family, and when I was 40 years old, I was blessed to conceive my son with in vitro fertilization, and here he is at an eight cell stage. Not long after his birth, he was diagnosed with a serious medical condition. I took a leave from my practice to be a full-time mom, 
In the meanwhile, I supported myself by serving as an expert in medical malpractice lawsuits. After about a year, my son was in great condition, and my question became, what next? Should I return to the operating room? I had a different idea. In 2000, I started a consulting practice called Medical Bridges. The idea was to help people collaborate more effectively with physicians, bring down the cost of healthcare, get better healthcare outcomes, and most importantly, avoid the kind of bad outcomes that I had been seeing for a year. You might think that this would be a slam dunk. After all, who doesn't want better healthcare? Yet, I struggled. I remember being at a medical meeting in Europe and going to plug my laptop in. I had an aha moment. Europe is wired differently than the United States. I could plug my laptop in, but in order to do that, I needed an adapter. Well, doctors are wired differently than business-minded people. You made a wise investment by enrolling in this course, and here's why. Things that lead to success in the business community don't necessarily work in the medical community. Here, you will learn what works in engaging physicians. Let's dive into the 10 laws of physician engagement. The first law is the most important. For physicians, money is the ultimate taboo topic. Think of how you feel when you have to talk about embarrassing problems with your doctor. Doctors feel exactly the same way when it comes to talking about money. Here are three factors that shape physicians' relationship with money. The first is the culture of medicine. In the United States government, there's a separation of church and state. In the world of medicine, there's a separation between the care a patient's get and a patient's ability to pay. To uphold this ethic, physicians simply do not talk about money. No wonder health care costs exploded. Reason number two is low financial literacy. Physicians are so busy learning how to take good care of patients that they have little time to invest in learning about how money works. And third, because of these two factors, physicians are intuitively aware of their vulnerability. Every day, people call their offices wanting to work with the rich doctors. In order to deal with reputable people, they get their advice from people that they trust. How do they manage their money? Three techniques. The first is benign neglect. They just assume that there will always be enough money. Second, there are the do-it-yourselfers. As you previously heard, about half of physicians are do-it-yourselfers. And third, physicians tend to delegate, either to a partner or to a financial advisor. Sometimes they don't choose well. I have a friend who had her entire retirement embezzled by her office manager before she figured out that anything was wrong. How can you apply this law? Master the mental handshake. The handshake started out as a ritual to demonstrate the two parties coming together were unarmed. When you build relationships with physicians, make sure that you show that you are not just armed with a sales pitch. Next law, physicians manage their wealth as patients manage their health. Think about the last time that you went to the doctor. Imagine yourself in the gown, sitting on the exam table. Then the doctor walks in in the white coat and sits down in front of you. Now swap places. Imagine you're the one wearing the white coat, and the physician is the one in the patient gown. Physicians feel exactly the same way about managing their wealth as you do when you go to the doctor's office and face a frightening medical situation. How can you use this law? Well, you can apply the medical litmus test. Imagine a physician were trying to acquire you as a patient, and they launched the exact kind of campaign that you're imagining. How would you feel about that physician? Next law, physicians have predictable patterns and habits. I live in western Washington, and I know that if I arrive at a certain river in January and February, I'll be treated to the sight of hundreds of eagles. Why? The spawning salmon are dying. The eagles know that if they show up at that place at that specific time, there will be a banquet on the riverbank. Your marketing goal is to be at the right place in the right time with the right marketing message. Once you understand the habits of physicians, you'll be in a much better position to do that. Just as an example, you may not know that virtually all physicians who begin new jobs do so July 1st. It has to do with the medical school calendar. You also know 
that people are most open to new relationships at times of beginnings, the new year, their birthday. So if you're in the medical market, summertime is an ideal marketing time. Next, the most influential person in a physician's life is another physician. Physicians train under an apprenticeship model. Part of our culture is having respect for what older, wiser physicians believe. If you can quote an older, wiser physician, you have a very good chance of influencing physicians' behaviors. Next, physicians seek financial leadership at this time of change. Right now, we won't go into the history of the American healthcare system. However, one highlight occurred in the 1990s when managed care was implemented. This was an effort to control health care costs. Insurance companies approached physicians and said, doctors, you have been sending us bills that we have been paying. That is not going to happen anymore. From now on, we will tell you how much we pay you. And further, you need to play by our rules. So here's what happened. Hospitals and clinics approached private practice physicians and said, look, doctor, the business of medicine is getting more complex now. Why don't you sell your practices to us? We'll take care of the business side of medicine and allow you to take care of patient care. When I got out of residency, about 80% of physicians had an ownership stake in the practice. By 2000, that number had dropped to 50%. Further, physicians soon discovered that the hospitals and clinics did not have their best interests at heart. Neither did the AMA. Physicians felt like they were on their own. The boomer physicians who have been through managed care are looking at the Affordable Care Act as managed care on steroids. They know that they need somebody in their financial corner advocating for their own best financial interests. Next law is that emotions drive motion. Anatomically and functionally, there are three parts of the brain. There's the thinking brain or the cerebral cortex. There's the feeling brain or the limbic system. And then there's the reptile brain. We'd like to believe that we make informed choices with our thinking brain, but neuroscience is helping us understand that we make most choices with our emotional brain and then justify them with our thinking brain. Further, each of us is temperamentally drawn to one of four emotional homes. Some people like being in control. This describes most physicians. Today, physicians are feeling out of financial control. If you can help them be in control, you have a very attractive value proposition. Some people want to belong. This describes nurses in general. And by the way, nurses make great clients. Nurse anesthetists can actually generate a higher revenue than primary care physicians. Some people want to feel valued. Many physicians purchase the trappings of financial success instead of building true wealth. And last, thank goodness for the accountants and the radiologists who want to be right and be smart. Next, physicians want to work with the experts. Here is a chart from medical literature showing the mortality rates of pancreatic cancer patients as a function of the level of experience of their providers. So smaller bars are good, big bars are bad you see that high volume providers get a much better outcome than people who only see pancreatic cancer patients once in a while. Physicians already believe that they have unique financial needs. They want to work with an advisor who works with people like them every single day. The lesson for you is plant your flag in the medical market. Let physicians know that you have a dedicated interest in working with people just like them. Next law, physicians need repeated exposure to a message before they take action. You would love to meet a physician, get to know them a little bit, and then get to the commitment conversation where you say, doctor, are we a good fit? However, it doesn't work like that. Building a relationship with a physician is more like walking a labyrinth. Physicians may decide when they first meet you whether or not they'll want to conduct business with you. However, it may take six to ten contacts with you before you get a check. What does this mean for you? As you build the infrastructure of a physician-friendly practice, 
plan to build a medical marketing labyrinth, have a system that you can capture physicians' names, send regular high-value content to them, and help them move through this medical marketing labyrinth. Next law is that physicians triage. They pay attention to the most important things first. Now, physicians know that they're poorly prepared for retirement. They know that they need some help. Why is it then that more physicians are not seeking out the help of financial advisors to plan for retirement? The answer is that there are more compelling things that draw their attention. What you'd like to do to join the high performers is deliver what physician prospects want and earn the privilege to deliver what they need. Right now, physicians are worried about how they're going to respond to Obamacare. You can build relationships and attract their attention by giving them high-value content that will help them manage problems that are active today so you can earn the privilege of helping them plan for retirement. A marketing campaign that's been working very well is offering physicians a replay to my webinar with seven ideas about how they can generate more revenue in the era of Obamacare. The last law is that physicians answer a call to service. And here's why this is important for you. You already know that people do business with people they know, like, and trust. And now neuroscience is helping us understand why. Our brains are wired with a special cell called a mirror neuron. The statement, I like you, really means I'm like you. I see part of myself reflected in you. Rapport building is really the activity of triggering mirror neurons. The truth is that what you do and what a physician does are mirror activities. You promote your client's fiscal health. Physicians promote their patient's physical health. You manage risk and help people make life-altering decisions in the face of an uncertain future. That's exactly what physicians do. The biggest secret is that if you want to conduct business with physicians, conduct yourself as one. Mirror physicians' behaviors to develop rapid rapport, and we will talk about how to do that. As you think about acquiring physician clients and building the infrastructure of a physician friendly practice, it should be pretty obvious to you that building relationships with physicians is different than building relationships with business minded people. The business model is not B2B. It's not B2C. I call it B2D, doing business with doctors. In this course, you will learn a blue ocean strategy for physician client acquisition. We'll do this step by step over the next seven modules. Thank you for stopping by today. I hope that you found value in this content. In module two, we're going to start the construction of your physician-friendly practice. See you in module two.